Hi, I'm Angie, and this is a new segment we're trying out. It's called People You Should Know, where we highlight picture book biographies we have at the library on interesting, fascinating people that you may have never heard of, but we think you should know. So our first one is, it began with a page, how Gyo Fujikawa drew the way by Kyle McClear. Okay, let's see how Gyo Fujikawa drew the way, and it began with a page. It began with a page, light and beckoning. It began with a mother writing a poem and a father working a field with a little girl named Gyo drawing a picture. It was 1913 and Gyo was five years old. So here she is drawing her picture. That morning, her mama said, Oyo, sleepyhead, it's going to be a busy day. And it was. So she's getting dressed, eating her breakfast, doing her chores, playing with her little brother, reading a book, drawing a picture. You can see she does all kinds of things during the day. Right until nightfall, Mama's friends had come and they were full of talk. We sailed to Mer America with our best kimono to see what we could be. Such disappointment. We need the boat. We need rights. Gio held her rice bowl and listened with curious ears. Did Gio know what she wanted to be? Not yet. Here she is down here with her rice bowl listening to the, her mom and her friends talk. What she did know was that she liked to draw. She loved the feel of a pencil in her hand, the dance and glide of a line, how a new color could change everything. A bright splash of yellow, a sleepy stroke of blue. Every day she started with an empty white page and filled it with pictures. So here's a bunch of her pictures. She drew all kinds of stuff. At home, surrounded by drawing tools and books, anything was possible. But at school, Gio didn't, didn't feel that way. She's kind of by herself over here. At school, no one said, that girl sure can draw. No one noticed her colored pencils or box of paints. No one even noticed when she moved away. So the girls here don't even notice that she's, she's gone. Here, they've moved. Gio's new home was a fishing village near San Pedro, California, a haven for Japanese Americans, a new life. Roaming with her friends, Gio felt weightless and free. So here she's got new friends. A ferry ride away at her high school, Gio sometimes still felt invisible among her mostly white classmates. Here she is with her classmates. But her drawings caught the attention of two teachers who, who was this girl whose eyes missed nothing, who could sketch rivers and boats and birds like a dream. Miss Cole and Miss Blum saw the energy in each line of her drawings. Gio was too poor to um, go to art school, but Miss Cole found money to pay her way. Gio was nervous to leave her home for the buzz and bustle of downtown Los Angeles. Not many girls, and even few Asian American girls, went to college in 1926, but Gio was determined. She sketched statues, flowers, and faces. Her sketchbooks filled up one after another. So here she is. All these guys are in class with her. She's the only girl. Hungry to know more, Gio set off for Japan, the land of her ancestors, to study traditional Japanese brush painting but the teachers were full of rules. Here she is in Japan, their teachers, showing her how to hold a pen. Instead, she traveled around the country doing her own learning, wood blocks, carving tools, inks made of soot. She lost herself in the prints of Hiroshige, Udamaro, and Hokusai. I hope I said those right and floated in a beautiful sea of kimono. Look how beautiful these kimono are. They're gorgeous. Travel fed her dreams, but back in America, it was time to earn money. 
For the next few years, Gio worked long days, painting murals and drawing for magazines. In 1941, she was offered a temporary job designing books at Walt Disney Studio in New York. A city filled with art and artists, it was hard for Gio to leave her family, especially her mother. Little did she know things were about to get harder still. What do you think is going to happen in 1941? Yep. In, 19, in early 1942, terrible things were happening. Bombs and gunfire rocked the world. America was at war with Japan. Gyo was shocked to discover that anyone who looked Japanese or had a Japanese name was now suspected of being the enemy. Japanese Americans living on the West Coast were ordered to leave their homes, their schools, their pets, their everything. There's a little kitty being left behind by this family. Gyo, along with others living on the East Coast, was, was told to stay where she was. On the West Coast, families preparing to leave tried to sell their larger belongings, like cars and furniture, to junk dealers. But they were offered only pennies. I won't sell, said Gyo's mother. You, instead, she set everything ablaze. So here she's burning all their furniture. Gyo's family was sent to a prison camp far, far away from their home. Gyo's heart was broken. So here's the prison camp. For the next three years, the world shrank, became tiny and terrible. Now when she gazed at White Page, no pictures would come. Gio mailed her family letters and sent gifts for her new nephew born in the camp, but her heart would not mend. Eventually, Gio began to draw again. She drew to keep her worries still and to save money for her family and to save money her family would need. When angry strangers saw her as the enemy, drawing comfort her. When the world felt gray, color lifted her. She wondered, could art comfort and lift others too? When the war ended, the Fujikawas were released. With no house or savings to call their own, they had to start again. For Gio, the next 15 years passed swiftly. There were stamps to create, store windows to decorate, a children's book of poetry to illustrate. There were two poodles who kept who needed loving. Now when Gyo walked around the city collecting ideas for her pictures, she began to notice little changes around her. So here's some protesters who are protesting um, the end of segregation, or for the end of segregation. So they are supporting sit-ins and they say segregation is morally wrong. We walk for human dignity. That's a good one and very timely. Still, there was so much that hadn't changed. At the library and bookshop, it was the same old stories. Mothers in aprons, with fathers with pipes, and a world of only white children. Gyo knew a book would hold more and do more. A book, she told her poodles, can be anything that anyone imagines it to be. Gyo knew what she wanted to do. Every day, she started with an empty page and filled it with pictures and words. When her book was done, she gave it to a publisher. And what did they see? They saw babies of different colors. Yep. Babies. Chubby-cheeked, squat-legged, bouncy-bottom babies. Naughty, nice, oh-so-busy, toddle-crawling babies. And the publisher said no. No to mixing white babies and black babies. It was not done in the early 1960s. America, a country with laws that separated people by skin color. But Gio would not budge. She closed her eyes and remembered all the time she had felt unseen and unwelcome. She looked the publisher in the eye and said, it shouldn't be that way. Not out there in the streets, not here on the page. We need to break the rules. Then she waited for them to rethink their decision. The babies waited too and waited and waited. But babies cannot wait. What do babies do? They grow up start getting older. Finally, the publisher said yes, and the book did very well. Very well. Babies loved it, so Gio kept going. Welcoming kids in from the edges, from the corners, from the shadows, 
Gio let each child find a place. Girls and boys freed from pink or blue, sharing jokes, joys, mishaps, and bruises. All sprawling out across the bright page, ready for a bigger, better world. Look at all a beautiful rainbow of babies. Okay. And then we have a timeline of Gio's life. So if you check out this book, you can learn more about what was going on during the time of her life. Um, and then here is a note from the author and illustrator as well. So um, you could learn that as read that as well. So that was Gyo Fujikawa. Um, Fuji, Fujikawa. I'm sorry, Gyo Fujikawa. It began with a page by Kyo McClear, and she was one of the first um, women to put babies of color mixed with baby white babies in books for children so she is definitely someone you should know this is a nice timely read and i think you should check it out thank you